if you don't open your eyes and if you hear 10 cars, I am sure everybody said, that is a five cylinder. It cannot be mixed with others. You always find it, you always hear it. Whenever a car like that is passing by, you hear this is a five cylinder. Introducing the new large Audi 5000 and the extraordinary engineers who designed it. This is an altogether new car with many new ideas. When I first proposed the five cylinder engine, they all smiled. Before the Quattro, we had reliable cars, but to me, it's a German, uh, German high school parking lot. When the teachers go for lunch, it's Audi 80 in weird colors, some Bahama beige or really crazy green with orange interiors and not that stylish at the time. Uh, this is Audi. It's a teacher's car. We are not recognized as a real competitor to the premium marks. We had to invest in technology to bring up the image of the brand. Yeah, when Professor P took the rudder at Audi, you know, he had a, a long list of innovations that he uh, brought forward. The first thing was the new five-cylinder engine, you know. We went to Germany to interview the chief engineer of the new large Audi 5000. What makes this new car so special here, P.A.? It has a five-cylinder engine. A what? Four is too small and six is too bulky. The idea was in 73 to design, to, to construct or develop a new engine with more power. And they had a cylinder distance, which was very long time, a strict law. It was 88 millimeters. And 88 millimeters did you allow to make a very big bore. So the only way to make a, a larger capacity in an engine was to add a cylinder or two. The six cylinder was too long for us. So this was the reason for the five cylinder. The first five cylinder was launched in uh, 1976. This engine had uh, 136 uh, horsepower, which is uh, in, for, for that time really a lot. And after that, uh, okay, what are they doing in English? That there is something completely new. Where are they? Where are they going? All of a sudden, Audi became renowned for uh, ingenious cars. Nobody would have dreamt of that uh, in the beginning of the 1970s, of course. Audi had a, made a step forward like no other manufacturer in these years, you know. And he lifted the Audi brand to a new level. The Audi 5000 is the largest German car for the money. How much is it? About $8,500. It's a beautiful car. We solve problems. If you find it attractive, so much the better. To show the history of all the five-cylinder Audi cars which were produced is practically impossible. If you look how long these, this kind of an engine was in production, the first showed in 1976 and the last in 1997, so 21 years, uh, Inline 5 was associated with Audi and Audi was associated with Inline 5s. The new large Audi 5000. It was a lot of work. It's even better than I hoped. Come and see it. We should ask more money for it. The special fact about the Inline 5 is we have a history, a huge history, and Inline 5, rally sport, motorsport. This is the association that comes like a lightning. Rally, the most varied of all motorsport, had another memorable year at the 83 Group B World Rally Championships. Once again, it was all about Audi. <laughs> When the car came with 200 km speed sideways, sliding to a corner, a thousand people standing on the road and they just went, it opened when the car came. I mean, nowadays it would not even work. After winning the manufacturer's title in 82, that wasn't enough as the team set out for their own driver's championship title as well. Led by some of Rally's best, Michel Mouton, Stig Bloomquist, and the eventual driver's champion, Anu Nicola, Audi managed a nail-biting second place showing. When we stepped into the Rally Motorsport, we had the five-cylinder engine with a lot of horsepower and we were the first with the Quattro drivetrain. And that was, in the following years, a way of success. 
Having worked on this engine, I discovered the, the capacity of these engines. For racing and for rallying purposes, the five-cylinder was the much better solution. Now, here in the 84 season, Audi has stepped up again with the signing of Walter Roll. End of 83, I said, now it's time to sign for Audi because especially Dr. Pierre, you said, listen to our engineers. It, it's always cheaper to go with Roll against Roll. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> Of course, I mean, Walter is uh, for sure the best rally driver ever in the world. And Walter, with his precise and fine style of driving, he really took it up to the max and it was fantastic to watch him. First of all, the liability of the engine was really great. The second thing is the sound of a five-cylinder engine. I made a very distinctive sound when you let off the gas, the wastegates would open and it would flutter. It's like a porpoise. And it was uh, so distinctive that people, I mean, they didn't even have to see the car, they just could hear the car and they knew that it was the Audi. It's a key point for this car. This five-cylinder sound is something very, very special. And I think that that's the sound that most people remember. There is no engine that delivers a more emotional sound than a five-cylinder. It was a unique sound in the whole world of motor racing, you know? Really cool. And it's another manufacturer's title for Audi as Stig Blomqvist wins the Drivers' Championship, followed by Hanu Mikola in second place. This Audi team is sure to go down as one of Rally's all-time best. It all began when Audi built a car to compete in America against the Americans. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the GTE St. Petersburg Grand Prix. We're just moments away from cars on course. Dr. Pierre called and said, uh, Mr. Stuck, we need you. We are going with Audi to motor racing. I said, what? I mean, Audi was legendary for rally, you know? And he said, no, we're going to enter the uh, motor racing and we're going to start out in the States because we need some promotion there with Transom Series. So they said, well, why not, instead of proving this on dirt and gravel, why don't we prove the advantages on a road surface, on a racetrack? Everybody thought that I was absolutely out of my mind to accept this challenge to race basically a full-size sedan in the Trans Am Series, very competitive series in the United States. We first showed the car, the bosses from Chevrolet or whatever, then they come and say, see, look at the engine. No chance, you know. I mean, they didn't even think about us, you know. They were laughing, as you just said, you know. All the laughing stopped after the first race. <laughs> we were just so dominant. We showed them pretty quickly where our good things were. We had with Royal Stuck and Hurley Haywood very excellent drivers which really could handle this car. And our following was enormous. We had so many fans that just loved those cars. The five-cylinder motor, when you think about that competing against a V8, you just kind of shake your head, how can that happen? The technology that went into that engine was so far ahead of anything that Detroit was doing at the time, it put to shame all the big V8s. They just could not keep pace with that Audi five-cylinder motor. And this engine was fantastic to drive. It gave you a lot of power, good on, on fuel efficiency. Everything was there what you needed to become a good racing engine. You know, the torque side wasn't as much as the V8s, but we had the all-wheel drive system that was transferring all that power equally to, to four wheels. It was Quattro and it was the power of the five-cylinder engine. And these two factors, the engine and with the Quattro drive, gave us a really good advantage and they freaked out. They couldn't believe it. You know? It was unbeatable. I won the championship, won the, the title for Audi for the manufacturer. We got so successful, they even banned us after 88. That's why we had to go to IMSA in 89, you know? 
and we did even even better there. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> Inspired by their convincing overall victory in the 1988 American Trans Am series, Audi decided to move up a league. After all, success demands promotion, and IMSA is the top series in production car racing in the USA. Audi chose a highly maneuverable racing machine, the 90 Quattro for the IMSA series. Audi chose the five-cylinder, four-valve turbo engine that won honors in rallying in the S1 version of the Sport Quattro. Yeah, when we, we were raced here in IMSA, you know, we, had a, we did a very funny thing to our opponents. I found a rubber door called, called Mr. Bus, you know, and you connect it to the rear inside of your window and had a pipe and a little uh, thing here to press. And when I pressed it, he pulled his pants down, you know. So when I overtook Pete Halsmer or somebody else, I did like this and he came <laughs> I freaked out, you know. And funny enough, I have this still at home, this thing. And they use it sometimes on the roads in Austria, and people laugh about it, you know. <laughs> Audi's first win comes in their second race and produces seven outright wins this season. All of a sudden, so many fans behind us because we were different, you know. We were the Bavarians in the States, you know. They loved our mechanics because they, they, they were yodeling and, and just bringing the, the Bavarian history. <laughs> and it was a change in motorsport in the States. And it was a change for good because we inspired the Americans to do better and they were inspired to beat us. So it was a win-win situation. Our message to all race fans in America and around the world. Audi sets the challenge. Quattro sets the pace. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 1987 Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, the race to the clouds, here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Looks like we'll have a beautiful day for our racers to try and become king of the mountain. Audi has dominated the climb for five years running. Can rally legend Walter Roll pile up a sixth trophy today? Today, people uh, which are not interested in motorsport, Say, don't talk to me about my early career, about Monte Carlo. They all talk about Pikes Peak. 30 years ago, I was in, in Pikes Peak. That is still, for a car which is 30 years old, and there we go. very impressive, even today. The most clever thing was that the Audi people realize, of course, you need four-wheel drive, you need an engine which has power, and all these things together. Four-wheel drive, five-cylinder engine, downforce. That was the key of success. As one E2, as it was called, Evolution 2, the Pikes Peak Quattro, uh, which set an eternal record, eternal, due to the fact that the road was paved later on. That was really a great show. This was uh, the top of, of the development from the five-cylinder race cars. If Walter keeps this pace, we aren't talking win, we're talking record-breaking history, folks. And the handling was, it was like, even on this gravel road, it was like in a race car, on this, always on this very fast corner, it was, it was like a train, it was not going sideways, and all the power was able to transmit on, on the road. It was so great, and the car was so fast, and, and the ditch was so deep, and it was really, still, that is, a highlight in my career. He's done it! I can't believe he's done it! Walter Roll has beaten the record by 20. So this was the final of the inline five and a highlight in the history. So it was really going at the peak of its power, at the peak of its performance, at the peak of its success. What better can you say of an engine? Sitting in a bike's peak is something famous. After 22 years of absence from inline fives, from own inline fives, we have again the five cylinder in the production range. When we launched the TTRS in 2009, we wanted to create the same feeling in the five cylinder engines of the 70s or, or 80s. We stayed with the same firing order. That's one, two, four, five, three cylinder for the emotional sound. 
the fans out there, they uh, went crazy. It was the right decision to reborn the five-cylinder. To bring that engine to the future, we need a complete redesign. And we needed to have a power increase, and all that were the targets for the new engine. As I saw the, the first real engine, it was fitting in there, it was short, it was compact, it was great design, all the, the shapes are perfectly done. And, and I, I felt so happy about that, what, what, what we created in our team and what we created at Audi. I got used bumps and everything and I was just hugging all my colleagues I could grab then and it's very emotional and was great. It's a real special moment when the new car then is launched. You know, the five-cylinder is something really unique. Being here in Lime Rock Park at a nice racetrack, having a fantastic car, enjoying it. I haven't driven such a car for a long time. And when I drove the car here the first time, I was really fed back home, you know. The, the talk, the, the revability, you know. It's just like coming home. And I was amazed, you know. The engine is, it sounds like it did sound in 89. We have two cars, the newest generation of TTRS and the brand new RS3 sedan. If you drive a car like a TTRS or an RS3, this is not a car you want to go only from A to B. You could use anything else just to be transported. No, driving a car like that means you want to drive, you really want to feel it, you want to feel the power, you want to hear the engine, you want to feel the car. I'm also a very sporty driver and going from 0 to 100 in 3.7 seconds, that's just a push, that's, that's like a, a too much at starting. You can very well feel the reactivity of the car, the response of the engine, everything is fitting very well together and you don't have to be a race driver to enjoy all these items these two cars have. If you look back in history, on the way of Audi to a sports car manufacturing company to a really sporty car producing company, the five cylinder is a milestone. From the brand, from the sound, the fact that Audi made very strong and very powerful five cylinders was something very special. If you hear a car like that passing by, at least in my mind, the film starts spinning, you go back to the glorious days of Audi Motorsport because the noise is so comparable. Uh, really, it's a time capsule.